the Stuart 7A model steam plant and this is part 8 running into a slight problem with the reversing bracket. Generally speaking on most of the Stuart model steam engines I've worked on the steam inlet is either in the centre of the steam chest on some of them but normally it's on the left hand side as you look at the steam chest but this engine has the steam inlet on the right hand side and I think this is going to cause a problem. And during this job I'm going to show a good way of getting out of this problem. I thought at first that the position of the bracket could be okay if it was bolted to the steam chest just below the steam inlet. But the more I look at this job, the more I think it's going to be a problem. I think the bracket is going to be too low. So what I've done purposely when I marked out the holes, I'm drilling two holes in the steam chest at the moment. These two holes have been drilled in position so that if the bracket is too low, I have the facility to be able to move it up to the next hole. The hole that was already drilled and threaded in the steam chest, which holds the bottom part of the steam inlet flange. If you're not quite understanding this logic, please keep watching and you'll see what happens. Drilling holes like this, which are very small, into the side of a steam chest is a very nerve-wracking job. But in reality, the more nervous that you become, the more likely you are to make a mistake. I didn't make a mistake. I could have done, because sometimes I make mistakes to illustrate how easy it is for a beginner to make mistakes, and more importantly, how to put the mistakes right. But you can't please everyone, and there's always one. And this viewer said that this was asinine. Now, if you look up asinine in the dictionary, you'll see what he means. And by the way, I did have a good education, so I do know what asinine means. It means really stupid or foolish. But as long as it shows beginners how to get out of potential problems caused by being a beginner, I don't think it's foolish or stupid. Thankfully, I didn't have to break off a 7BA tap just to illustrate how you must not do this, and in this clip you can see that the bolts fit perfectly in the holes. It's a good idea when threading small holes to actually use the three types of taps. The first one is called a taper tap, and it goes into the hole and gradually makes the thread. And the second tap is normally referred to as a second because it's not quite as tapered as the first one. And the last one is parallel all the way down, and this is called a plug tap. A plug tap allows you to thread right to the bottom of the hole. Please be aware that most taps break easily, but 7BA and 8BA and smaller than that break very easily. The bolts that are normally by are always too long, because you can reduce the length but you can't extend it. So both of those top bolts are just cut down versions of the bottom bolt. I just ground them down on the belt sander and then rounded the edge. Time now to make the short piece of shaft that goes through the bracket and the drop arm and the reversing lever. I bought this piece of stainless steel from Blackgate's Engineering and it was supposed to be 5 30 seconds of an inch but they're not anymore, they're 4mm. And 4mm is ever so slightly larger than 5 30 seconds of an inch. The 4mm shaft would not fit in the holes at all. A very quick and simple solution, just go through the holes with a 4mm diameter reamer. This hardly removed any material but now the pin fits perfectly through all of the parts. And to finish this sequence, in this clip I'm pushing the reamer through the reversing lever. And now everything fits together really well. And now it's time to look at the geometry of the reversing gear. Is it going to work? Uh, no. The problem is that the bracket that holds the drop arm is too low. And when I look on the drawing, it's obviously too low. And this is the only place I could fit the bracket because, as I mentioned earlier, the steam inlet flange is in the wrong place, at the wrong side. I could have mounted the bracket at the other side, but I've never seen an engine with the bracket mounted at that side. Besides, it's shown on the drawing with the bracket at the right-hand side. But never fear, I have a solution, and it will be quite a good one. And just have one more go at this viewer who commented, it won't be asinine either. Some experts may be thinking, this man is an idiot. Why not turn the steam chest round? And no, you really can't do that either. I suppose you could bodge it and use a really thick gasket or a metal plate. But the hole in the steam chest to accept the valve spindle is not right in the middle. It's just offset slightly. So I think my idea in the end will look quite attractive because I didn't like the original arrangement. It was just an inlet flange that was threaded to take a T-piece. In order to fit this bracket in the correct place, I need to put a countersunk bolt in to hold the cylinder cladding. And in this clip I'm temporarily screwing an 8BA countersunk bolt in there, 
but my electric hand drill that takes the countersink is currently in the house because I've been doing some DIY. I will be countersinking this hole in the cladding a bit deeper. As I mentioned earlier, I have a good idea that should work and I'll show it in the next episode. Now it's time to fit the reversing lever to the shaft. First of all, I secure the shaft to the reversing lever using some Loctite 603. And to be honest, it would be perfectly fine to leave it like this. Loctite 603 is a very good adhesive. But no, I'm going to cross drill the reversing lever, going all the way through the shaft itself and coming out the other side. Then I'll fit a small taper pin. So this is a real belt and braces approach. But that's enough for now. Thanks for watching and I hope you found it useful. Please take the time to visit my Main Steam Models website. Click on the section of the website that says Video Playlists. And by doing that you will find it very easy to find other videos that you may like to watch.